seeing the screen. Um, first of all, I will introduce the, the, the background to this research. So you might know that the um, oil industry is a water intensive one. And it uses around six cubic meters of, of water per each uh, ton of uh, oil feedstock that goes into a refinery. And around half of this uh, at some point becomes wastewater. Now, refineries are, and, and the oil in this industry as such is very often placed in, in water scarce regions. Um, and for this reason, um, there's an increasing interest in, in water reuse due to environmental and also regulatory constraints. So this is why this research project was set up called Integroil. Uh, this was a Horizon 2020 funded project with 10 partners from seven countries. It had a budget of close to 6 million euro. And the main goal was to develop a, a solution for the oil and gas industry to treat wastewater in order to uh, render it suitable for uh, reuse um, in different applications in oil refineries. And it was also a goal of the project to integrate in this system uh, the student support uh, system that allows the, the, uh, this solution to work with minimal process understanding by, by the, the operators. So as part of this project, there was a demonstration plant that was built in a, uh, in a re actual refinery in Turkey. You can see it in the picture here in Izmit, uh, close, relatively close to Istanbul. And uh, here you can see the location of the actual demonstration plant has a capacity of 1.5 cubic meters per hour. You can see it's, it's built into a set of shipping containers. So there's a nice video if you're interested uh, in YouTube. If you put Google, if you put in YouTube just Integroil, uh, you will probably find it. Um, but here you see more or less what it looks like, and um, uh, you can see that the, the plant uh, contains uh, or this consists of a set of treatment modules. Uh, the first one is a dissolved air flotation unit, followed by a membrane bioreactor, and then we have a ceramic ultrafiltration unit. This is followed by a catalytic uh, weather oxidation. We have then uh, advanced oxidation by means of ozonation with uh, hydrogen peroxide and a reverse osmosis uh, unit. And then we have a water storage tank for the uh, treated water and a chemical dosing station. Now about life cycle assessment or LCA for short, um, maybe part of the audience is not familiar with this uh, tool. Uh, LCA is essentially a method that we use to assess the environmental impacts of products and services is based on mass and energy balance. So here you have an example of a product life cycle, which is uh, washing detergent. What we try to do with LCA uh, in a simple, uh, with a simple explanation would be that we try to quantify the use of natural resources and the amount of pollution generated by all the activities uh, involved in the life cycle of a product or in our case in this research of a process. And we try to put this information into a set of uh, indicators, environmental impact indicators that allow us to interpret the results. So in this project, the goal was to compare the integral technology developed in the project with the conventional treatment that is currently applied in the Izmit refinery, which is treatment followed by discharge of the effluent to the sea. And now the integral technology is, is assessed under three scenarios, which correspond to the three uh, reuse qualities uh, that can be achieved by the plant. And these are firefighting, reuse for firefighting, reuse for cooling, and reuse as boiler feed water. Now, uh, the capacity that we considered for the study uh, was 500 cubic meters per hour. This is the actual capacity of the, of the actual uh, wastewater treatment plant at the refinery. So we had to conduct a kind of theoretical scale up of the demonstration plant to this scale. And in this presentation, I'm going just to discuss three indicators, greenhouse gas emissions, non-renewable uh, renewable energy demand, and uh, freshwater consumption. Now in the, here we have two tables. Uh, the one on top shows the some key uh, water quality limits that uh, the water treated needs to comply with in order to be reused. Uh, so you have the three qualities. You can see that, um, um, of course, the most strict uh, guide, guidelines are for boiler reuse. You can see that very clearly in the conductivity uh, 
uh, values. And uh, then the table at the, at the bottom shows the utilization rate for different treatment combinations. Uh, so, for example, if, you, if we wanted to achieve uh, firefighting reuse quality, we could say that 15% of the time, as you see here, uh, we could achieve it with the demonstration plant this quality by only uh, operating the DAF followed by the MBR. Uh, but for example, if we wanted to achieve boiler reuse quality, we needed to run all the treatment units 100% of the time. So the six, uh, these six uh, treatment units had to be in operation in order to achieve that quality because of the really stringent um, quality limits that uh, this, this, this reuse uh, quality has. So I'm going to show a few flow diagrams for you to understand what activities are involved in each treatment or each scenario. Here you have, first of all, the reference, which is what the uh, refinery is currently doing with its wastewater. So the current treatment consists of a dissolved air flotation followed by activated sludge, and then the water is discharged. This generates a, a sludge stream that is currently dewatered and then sent to a cement production plant as alternative fuel that will substitute, for example, coal or petroleum coke. So this means that this use of sludge as energy source is substituting uh, some other fuels, and this is an environmental benefit. So here in the diagram, I'm showing these substituted activities or em em environmental benefits with these uh, dotted line boxes. So this would be the reference. Then we move to the first integral scenario in which we achieve uh, water reuse for firefighting purposes. So we need to operate the integral plant. This generates sludge, but also a spent catalyst from the water oxidation. And this allows us to obtain water that can be used for firefighting. And therefore we are avoiding the use of fresh water that wouldn't have to be uh, filtered. So we are avoiding this treatment here. This is also an environmental benefit. In the uh, case of cooling water, we have a different set. Of, well, we have the integral plan in operation with a different set of combinations of, of treatment units, uh, but we have the same types of waste, maybe in different quantities. And what we are substituting in this case is a more intense uh, water treatment because cooling water if produced from fresh water, would need to undergo a more, more intense treatment that would include a conventional uh, physical chemical treatment followed by reverse osmosis. And then we have the, uh, the final scenario where the water achieves re reuse quality for boilers. And in this case, uh, it looks similar, but uh, the, 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 um, the activity that we are substituting in terms of water reuse would be an even more intense treatment uh, consisting of a conventional chemical, physical chemical treatment followed by ion exchange. But also here it's interesting to note that uh, the, the effluent from the wastewater treatment plant is warmer uh, than fresh water and therefore we are saving some energy because otherwise in order to put this water into the boiler circuit we would need to warm it up. This fresh water would need to be warmed up to some um, we, yeah, I don't know the temperature, but it would need to be heated up. And this uh, need for um, heating is lower in, in the case of the integral scenario because the water is already warm. Okay, and now I'm going to jump to the results straight away. Um, this is a, a graph for greenhouse gas emissions. They are measured in kilogram of CO2 uh, per cubic meter. Everything is compared on a, on a basis of one cubic meter of wastewater treated. Um, and we have positive and negative values. Uh, so the positive values mean that we are emitting CO2, whereas when we have a negative uh, value, it means we are saving CO2. Uh, so that would be a, uh, um, a good uh, um, outcome for the environment. And we can see that uh, the, the reuse for boiler scenario achieves a net greenhouse gas saving. And this is due to the um, to the saving of the ion exchange, but also because it's saving energy for warming, for heating the water in the boiler circuit. We see that the emissions are higher than the reference for the cases of reuse for cooling and for firefighting. Uh, 
because of the electricity consumption of, of the, these treatments. Ivan, two, two minutes, please. Yeah, that should be enough. Thank you. And then we have the, in the energy consumption indicator. You can see that it more or less looks the same. Um, it has the same pattern in terms of ranking the different, uh, the different scenarios. And this more or less could be expected because uh, energy and greenhouse gas emissions are very well correlated. But then we have the last indicator, fresh water use. And we can see that here, all three integral scenarios perform better than the reference. When we look at the entire life cycle of this process, we have a net uh, uh, fresh water saving when compared to the reference treatment. So all three more or less achieve a saving of around one cubic meter of fresh water per cubic meter of uh, wastewater generated. So to conclude, we can see that we have a net a, a better performance for boiler reuse in greenhouse gases, you know, not the three indicators really, uh, greenhouse gases, energy and, and fresh water saving. Uh, in the case of cooling and firefighting reuse, uh, fresh water saving is favorable, uh, but not in the other indicators. Maybe that's because we are actually treating the water to a, to a level that is even better uh, than that of fresh water. So we are cleaning the water even too much for, for the purpose that is needed. Um, but also the results are very sensitive to, to how electricity is produced. The processes are consuming electricity. If this electricity was using more, a, a higher share of renewables, the environmental impact would be lower. And there we can say that LCA is very useful in order to assess the environmental impact of uh, products, but also of, of uh, processes as, the, as, this, as in this case study. And that's all from my side. I hope I, I have sticked to the, to the time. Um, thank you very much. Uh